Hello, this is Dr. Sean Perry. Welcome back to a video series on intermediate algebra. This video will be about the fundamental properties of algebra. Um, this should be mostly review for people taking this course, but I just wanted to make sure that I said a few things before we begin. So first of all, what is a number? Uh, a number is an indicator of some value either a count of some whole number of things or a measurement of some quantity. Now, we will deal with uh, a lot of different kinds of numbers in this class. Um, there are more exotic kinds of numbers, such as negatives and complex numbers, and we'll be seeing all of those. Uh, and they are measuring perhaps more subtle things, but in most cases, they're still measuring or counting something. And in any case, they're all going to obey a certain set of fundamental rules, which we're going to go over now. So the first basic rule of numbers is that they are monovalent. They only have one value each. And so in this way, two numbers are either equal to each other or they're not. For example, uh, here we have a count of something. In this case, the count of purple things is equal to the count of these light blue things. And so we would say that the numbers associated with those counts are equal. In this case, to try not to keep things too trivial, I've made them different colors to say this is a count of something different. And likewise, um, two counts that are not equal to each other, we would write this way. Now we'll talk a little bit more about what the equal sign means in just a bit, uh, and this the not equal to sign. But the main idea is that that sign indicates that two things have the same numerical value. Uh, later on, we'll talk about inequalities like greater thans or less thans, and we'll go into more details about how the rules for those kinds of things work, but for right now, I'm content with talking about just equality. So what are we going to do with numbers? Uh, to begin with, we will add and multiply them. Uh, these are called operations. They take in two numbers, and then they give you back some third number. Now, addition is basically uh, the concatenation of two groups, combining them together to form one group, and asking about what is the quantity of that new group. Multiplication, on the other hand, is taking a number of groups, which is equal to the second quantity, and saying, well, now how many do I have? If I have four groups of three, then I have 12 in total. Now, these operations of addition and multiplication are very nice. Uh, they have a lot of nice properties, and let's talk about them. One is called that they are commutative, and that means that it really doesn't matter which is on the left and which is on the right. We'll get the same output. For example, if I flip the rolls of 3 and 4 here, and I add 4 to 3 instead, I still get 7. And if instead of talking about 4 groups of 3, I'm talking about 3 groups of 4, which we can kind of see just by turning the little rectangle on its side there, um, we still get 12, right? So in some sense, it doesn't really matter whether or not I say 3 plus 4 or 4 plus 3 or 3 times 4 or 4 times 3. It still is going to give me the same numbers in each case. This is what we mean when we say commutative. Now, when you see parentheses in math, this is usually used to say, hey, consider this part first, or do this part first, or look at this part in isolation. If we have three numbers to add or multiply, then actually we can use parentheses to explain that. It doesn't really matter which pair we do first. So for example, for addition, if I have three plus four plus five, and I do the four plus five part first, I get nine, and three plus nine is 12. Or if I do the 3 plus 4 part first, I get 7. 7 plus 5 is 12. And so it didn't matter which of those pairs I started with. It just mattered that, you know, we, uh, it didn't matter at all, right? So this is what we call associativity, right? They are associative because this sense of order doesn't matter. And multiplication goes the same way. If you look at 3 times 4 times 5, you get 3 times 20, which is 60. Or if you do 3 times 4 times 5, you still get 12 times 5, which is still 60. Right, and so we call this associative or the associative property. And finally, there is a relationship between 
parentheses, multiplication, and addition. And this is perhaps the most important of these rules because we're going to base a lot of our tricks and a lot of the work that we have to do is going to require us to sort of take a deeper look at how these things relate to each other. And there's a nice pictorial way of seeing what this property says. Um, if I take a group of uh, three things by four things, and I add that to a group of two things by four things, I might as well just squeeze those two little rectangles of dots together and get four things on one side, and then three plus two things, or five things on the other side. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether you count these one at a time or all together, you're still going to get 20. And we write that in this way, that four times three plus three, uh, four times two, right, is equal to four times three plus two. And this could be uh, read the other direction, considering the four multiplying by this stuff out here. If we multiply the four against each term, what we call distributing that term, we bring the four inside, so times this stuff, we bring the four inside, and we must multiply it by both objects. We have to do both of these multiplications in order to get the right number. This is called the distributive property. And we'll be seeing a lot of this. This is our basis for factoring. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna show up a lot. Now, we use letters in math as a stand-in for numbers. Now, this isn't to make things more confusing. This is so that we can take a look at the patterns that are always true, and not just true for some particular numbers, right? The, uh, uh, a few of those kinds of patterns we just took a look at, right? Those don't matter if I used fours or twos or threes or if I used any other numbers. And so what we wind up with is uh, a way of writing things using these letters, uh, which we can use to encode those, those properties. So here is your first of the critical notes. I want you to copy this down into your notes. This will be something that you turn into me. These are the properties of algebra. Pause the video at this point in time and copy this down. Now, I want you to notice that we have the commutative, associative, and distributive property. And there's one more that I didn't mention too much, which is order of operations. Now, if there is an option for which we should do first, either multiplication or addition, you always do the multiplication part before the addition part. 